What's up guys, my name is Dan Danny or Daniel. I draw cards and turn them into 3D prints using Hue Forge, and I also do Hue Forge tutorials for all of you. Today, I'm gonna ramble a little bit. We're gonna talk about 0.9 and why it is so beneficial that the UI has been updated. There are a lot of people that are against the UI and that don't like change. I completely understand where you're coming from. I don't like change! But the old way in 0.8 was broken, and there was a lot of clutter, so it needed to be cleaned up. That way, new users that are coming into Hue Forge would be able to navigate the software easier than what we have had to deal with since the beginning of Hue Forge. You see, back in the day, all we had were sliders. We didn't even have sliders that you could turn on and off. That didn't come until later, and then we didn't even have that color core until pretty recently. So after months of trying new things with Hue Forge and trying out different UIs and different layouts, we finally settled on what you see today in 0.9 as your default layout. Keep in mind, you you can customize this layout. You can bring sliders back if you're used to using those. And I'll show you how to do that in today's video. But really it's so much easier to use this UI than it was the last UI because the color core is so powerful and it's so much easier to read what is happening with your Hue Forge as you're making it. So I'm gonna show you how to use that color core to its full potential, where things have moved in 0.9 and how you can customize it if you wanna get it close to how it was before. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. This video is sponsored by Overture. When it comes to 3D printing, quality matters. That's why Overture is one of the most popular choices for 3D printing filament among creators. Engineered for consistency and precision, Overture filament delivers flawless prints every time. Whether you're printing hue forges, functional prints, or detailed design, Overture's wide range of materials ensure smooth printing and reliable results. They offer everything from PLA to polycarbonate and everything in between. If you're in need of affordable filament for your next 3D printing project, go check out Overture using the link down below in the description. So to start off, we're gonna start in the old version of Hue Forge. This is something that you're familiar with. This is how it looks, where everything is kind of. The thing that a lot of people don't know is that you could actually drag and customize the way that Hue Forge looks to fit whatever way of workflow works best for you. You could also just pull out the filament library if you wanted to, and you could do other options along those lines. And if you ever needed to, you could come up to Windows and you could reset the view. You could also turn off different um, widgets and you could change up the way that it looked completely and then you would just reset it then to reset it you would have to restart if there's anything here that you don't want to see you can do the same thing and you can turn off different widgets throughout same concept you can grab here just like any other type of program that you've used in the past and you can customize the way that hue forge looks for your needs maybe it doesn't make sense the way that it is now but you can just mess around with widgets and put them where you want and what makes sense to you so now we have color sliders back if that's something that you want they work just as they did before where you can turn on and turn off color sliders but something that's important to note is that the color core is so powerful sliders were only here because we didn't have a way to show how colors blend and when i say that if we turn off some of the colors within our color core and we bring in like a high TD white with this black on the bottom, you can see this visualization of what is blending between the white and the black areas. We get all these gray areas in between, and then these equal signs show saturation points. So this is where at this particular layer height where white is completely saturated. So you could actually thin up your Hue Forge by bringing this white down to here. And with sliders, you can actually see what layer heights you're at. Well, with color core, you can hit this little ruler here, and now you can see at what layer heights you're at. That is a big deal that a lot of people have been confused on. So I wanted to point that out really quickly. If we come back to Windows, I'm gonna turn these sliders off once again. The next thing that I wanna talk about is how do you disable sliders within your color core? All you have to do is hit space on your keyboard and that will enable or disable colors. That is something, once you know that you can disable and re-enable really easily, and you can also right click and you can disable here. It shows you what you need to do to disable these colors right here with spacebar. It's a lot easier to understand the benefits of using color cord. It just cleans up the entire UI. So the next thing that's missing is model geometry. This is where we thickened up our hue forges. This is where we added depth to our hue forges. We could go into different luminance modes. We could look at different image formats. So we could look at it within luminance or within color, it's spike removal, etc. Things have changed a lot here. So if we go back over to our new version of Hue Forge, you might see over here in the top left, we have model geometry. Model geometry has had a few of its options removed from this slider, and it's been added to different areas within Hue Forge. 
This is because there were a few things in model geometry, like the image format, being able to see it in luminance, that can be useful in certain situations. Spike removal is the big one that a lot of people are probably looking for, and it is here in your model geometry. If we come down to the bottom, you can see that we have our detail size, our layer heights, our base layer, our thickness, and our blend depth. So base thickness is our min depth, blend depth is our max depth. This is how thick our hue forge will be. This is where our hue forge will start. And then these are your other, your width and your height. This is your X and Y to make your hue forge, to scale your hue forge the way that you would like. Below that, we have a few more options. I'm not gonna go too in depth on what these do, but the main one that's been confusing is where is describe to describe the swap instructions and what filaments you may have used in this project. So describe is down here at the bottom. And another thing that's been talked about is where is our luminance so that we can change in between standard mode, we can go into color pop mode or color match mode. That has been moved to the top here within the new update. You can see here we have mesh mode and this is standard we can change that to color match very easily color pop whatever and we also have our depth mode so some people may use dynamic depth some people may use static depth personally i use static depth in almost all of my hue forges so i have control over how tall these hue forges are again i'm not going to go too deep into what that means if you don't use it don't worry about it but the default mode is dynamic depth and it's here for people that are looking for it so within the new update you can actually come up to filaments and you can go over to types there's a new option to merge your pla with your PLA plus if we go back over to the old version of Hue Forge you can see that it was kind of a hassle if you owned PLA plus and PLA to have to go in between and figure out where certain colors were let's say that I had a purple filament it wouldn't show up in my PLA and I would have to remember you know which tab I had put it in so that's a quality of life fix another quality of life update besides the merge PLA and PLA plus, as you can see all of the different types of filaments that you may use for your hue forges. If you don't have any ABS and you don't want to see the ABS tab within your filament library, you can actually just turn off ABS and you saw that it updated there. Again, we'll do this with ASA so that you can see it. Pay attention, it's gone. It's, it's a way that if you're not going to use ABS, you're not using ASA for your Hue Forges, you don't have to see it within your filament library. It's a quality of life update that declutters the UI a little bit better for you. Same thing goes for brands. You can turn off all of these brands if you don't have any of these colors and you don't want to play around with them. You can just turn them off through this option here. That way you can declutter your filament library further. Another thing that people like to use were filament sets. This was down here. You could change filament sets based on what you were doing. If you wanted to see what a general Hue Forge with a fire theme look like. You could just use these sets. Maybe you had the filament packs from Polymaker and you just wanted to see a general idea of how you should set them up. This is a very useful feature that a lot of people were using. If we come into the new version of Hue Forge, again, it's in filaments. You come to filament sets and now you're able to use whatever you wanted to just the same way. Within the old version of Hue Forge, you had wireframe here to actually look at what your mesh was doing. The way that you turn that on and off within the new version of Hue Forge is it's right here. I'm sure that you saw it between remesh and reset view. Steve is going to have a video coming out very soon on the Hue Forging YouTube. So go check that out. Go subscribe to him if you're not already. That's where a lot of really good information on Hue Forge, more technical details are going to be. Now I want to talk about something that is new within this version of Hue Forge that you may have not seen. Although we can do frontlit traditional Hue Forges, you may not have known that there is a backlit option. There was a backlit option previously in the last versions of Hue Forge up here at the top. You see backlit. You could also use slicer view. Another way to do slicer view is holding down your mouse wheel. You click on the button and it'll bring up your slicer view to show you a preview of what it's going to look like within your slicer. Those options are here, but we also have a new mode here that's called Glow Lit. Previously in Hue Forge, there was no way to show a prediction of what your Hue Forge would look like if you use glow in the dark filaments. Yes, you can use glow in the dark filaments in Hue Forge and it will look awesome. But now when you go to add a new filament to your library, let's say that your glow in the dark filament is traditionally white or clear. There's now a secondary option here that you'll be able to add a glow, a fluorescence, or a color shift. Color shifting filaments are those filaments that like may have a base color of purple with a mica powder of blue in it so that when you look at it in different lights, it'll show different colors. Fluorescence, those are UV reactive filaments. But for now, I'm gonna show you how glow works if we come in and we add glow, we can now come over to this option here. And this is what color of glow in the dark filament you have. So we'll say that this is a green glow in the dark filament. 
I'm gonna change this to glow and we're gonna say green. Now we have this value here next to the color. This is to determine how well your filament glows in the dark. And if you have a TD1 or a TD1S, there is a new update out that will actually determine this particular value. Still working on how to determine that secondary glow. But if we go in here for example sake and we'll set this to two, we can save and close. Now we have our glow green in our library. So let's go ahead and look. We have glow green. You can see now that it is going to render what that glow effect will look like within your Hue Forge, which is a super cool feature because you may have not known that you could use glow in the dark, but now you can predict glow in the dark. So it'll be a lot easier to do with your general Hue Forges. Here we can turn on our grays and it will actually work. Now, if we go back over to front lit, you can see this is what it'll look like whenever you print it without the glow effect. But as soon as you turn on glow lit, this is what it should look like after you activate that glow in the dark filament and it's the lights are turned off in your room or wherever you have this particular hue forge. Another thing that I wanna talk about while we're here is if we come back over to front lit, it'll be easier to show. You can hover over layers now and if you see in the Hue Forge itself, it's showing you what is being affected within the image at that particular layer. This is a super nice quality of life update so that you can see exactly what this layer is doing to your Hue Forge so that you can add colors appropriately wherever you might want to. Something else that I wanna show you within this filament screen is whenever you go to add a new color, let's just say this green, for example, you come over here, we'll change the name to generic green. It's a 5TD, that's fine. You can see here that we have tags now. Tags are a super big quality of life update. If you have particular filaments that maybe you wanna separate, we'll just use Neocoy as a tag. You can add multiple tags and you separate those by using commas. We'll just say tree, just for an example. We're gonna save and close. Now you can come down here to filter and you can type in Neocoy. There is that generic green. Or if we come back, we can use tree. There again is that generic green filament. Super big deal because if you wanted to separate colors by anything other than color or TD or brand, it was not possible in the previous update. So this is a very nice quality of life fix. And you can see here our tags are within it. We can delete those tags if we need to. So not only can we add glow in the dark filament, but we can also add that color shifting filament. Color shifting filament is something like Polylight Neptune which is this base blue with another color using mica powder in it. Cookie Cat has like witch's blue. Overture also has color shifting filaments. Previously, it wasn't possible to see what those filaments look like when you printed them. You just kind of had to guesstimate what it was going to look like and what the results were gonna look like. So now we can use, instead of glow lit, we can use render lit. And you can see what that filament is going to look like once it's printed. You can see the way that the light is going to interact with that filament just the way it would in person. Now, this is a very new feature and it is not 110% correct, but it will get you within the ballpark that you need to see what that filament is going to look like whenever you print it on your Hue Forges. So that is a very cool new feature. And the same thing goes for fluorescent colors. Like let's use this yellow from New Makers. If we turn on Render Lit, it will show you what it's gonna look like after you have that UV light on it to make it look a little bit different. These are very cool new features that have come to Hue Forge that are only going to continue to get better and are going to continue to benefit you in the future when you're doing your filament paintings. This video is the start of all of my new videos coming out for 0.9. I have an end to end for all of the modes within Hue Forge. So subscribe to stay up to date on those. And a huge shout out to my patron members as well as my YouTube members. You guys are the reasons that these videos keep coming out. I appreciate every single one of you that supports me and keeps me going as well as a huge shout out to Overture for sponsoring today's video. Go check them out. I have an affiliate link down below in the description as well as a 10% off coupon down below for their website. So go check them out. I will have a lot of videos coming in the future about standard mode, about color match mode, and about color pop mode as well as other tips and trick videos for you guys. So stay tuned for that and I hope you learned something.